Nityanandam. With deep gratitude to my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swamiji, I welcome you to the series on, manifest, on Hinduism for Dummies. See, a lot of people have very basic questions on God. Who is God? Where is He? Will I find Him? These are all such inane basic questions that we humans are always looking for. And that is, the world is divided into two, atheists and people who believe in God. It's as simple as that. Who is God? How do I find God? Many religions give us many definitions, many meanings. Some say we are the son of God, some say we are the shadow of God. But only in Hinduism we are told that we are God and we are shown the path towards that. Now everybody may have very cynical ideas. Oh, if I'm really God, why am I born here? Why should I be here? Why can't I already be a God instead of living like a human being? Instead of having to go through this poverty, suffering, conflicts. But have you ever actually searched for God? Walked towards the path that will lead you towards God? Most of us have always walked outside, towards fame, towards success, towards wealth, towards relationships. That is not God. God is inside of you. It is the feeling, it is the principle, it's a philosophy. It is how you live life. It's how you feel about yourself. Of course, if you're going to say, oh, I am great, I'm a great king, I'm, you know, I'm a great personality, I have achieved, I've super achieved in my life, and the rest of the, hu rest of the humanity is uh, below me, that is not a godlike feeling. That can be called a megalomaniac, not God. There is never a concept of angry God in Sanatana Dharma. There is no concept of sorrowful God either nor the concept of sin in sincere repentance, nor that God is only one. Why should I be forced to accept God as a single entity or the single form? I don't like being forced to accept. Let me explore. Let me find out for myself if God is external or internal and then let me decide what it is. That is Sanatana Dharma. It is the this Dharma this Hinduism which we call it as today that teaches you find out yourself these are the various paths that the great ancient sages, seers, incarnations have followed and they have found who they are they have reconnected to the consciousness, the super consciousness they have experienced what it means to be like super consciousness so this is the path I followed, this is what I have found and this is how I lived these are the various Vedas, the Upanishads and the Agamas. But it does not stop you from the next generation of human beings, from the new generation, to continue exploring, to continue finding new paths. It's only this Sanatana Dharma that gives you the doorway and encourages you by its past history. Even if you see the history of Sanatana Dharma, it is people telling you, go out express yourself do not be afraid to investigate the truth investigate the truth yourself and find the truth and tell the world i have found myself to be a reflection of the super consciousness which we know as god and this is the path i have followed tell the world shamelessly again shame is a very is a concept that is not even associated with hinduism in hindu dharma Human beings are not taught guilt, fear or shame for the simple reason that it leads to powerlessness. How is guilt making you feel guilty, making you feel like a sinner going to make your life better? If I have made a mistake, I should only be able to say yes, I have made a mistake. Let me look in, complete with what has made me, force me to make those mistakes and live a better life as a human being. That is how, if you see, the greatest seers, the greatest sages, the greatest saints have lived their life and they have not thought twice 
to tell the mistakes they have made because they are not ashamed of the mistakes. Nor does it mean that they are proud of the mistakes. They are just sharing where they have missed and how they completed with it and restarted their life, rewired their life towards the greater path. I am sure all of us have heard the story of the great Parashuram. How angry he was. He was an angry king, an angry Kshatriya who became a sage. Like this we have many many stories in our history of Sanatana Dharma which shows it is not the quality with which you are living but the quality with which you want to attain and continue this life and many lives if you want to. Even life or the next life is a decision you can take whether you want to be reborn, not reborn or continue living as you are living without death is again the decision of a human being. This science is what Sanatana Dharma teaches. This Sanatana Dharma as we so fancifully call it Hinduism now. If you have any questions regarding Hinduism please let me know and I will answer them live or leave it in the comment box and I will get back to you. Yes, I can see one question coming. Um, tell me. I have a question. When you talk about Hinduism I feel really inspired. You are telling about so many different dimensions. Mm. But in my day to day life, in the society where I live, I don't see my friends practicing it. So mm. won't I be an odd one to suddenly follow some religion? <laughs> I understand where you are coming from because that's how I used to feel. See, in my pre-monastic life, my mom, my pre-monastic mother was obsessed with rituals, pujas, homas. In fact, I used to literally run away from the pujas and homas because they take number of hours, endless hours where you just sit and sit and sit and do nothing. I always used to feel I can do something better. I can read a book or go talk to a friend. Then we tend to lose it. We think it is not worthy of it. But if you are convinced that you are gaining something out of this, then you will follow it. You will fight with the social standards and say, no, I have gained knowledge. I have gained myself back. I know this is good and I stand for it. Whether you like it or not, whether others like it or not, I know what I have gained through this. So I will follow this. What has happened over the last few decades is the pujas, the homas, the mantras have lost the literal meaning to us because we really do not know what they mean. What they mean. So when that happens, we feel we don't gain anything. But Swamiji, my guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swami, is now reviving the whole uh, ancient sciences including the pujas, the homas, the slokas and teaching us with the essence of the meaning, with the meaning what each sloka means and when I say with the meaning I understand what I am getting out of it. When I understand that, when my fundamental is very strong, nobody can shake me. Yes, I have one more question. For me, I don't feel living Hinduism is like fashionable because mm. if we have to live the life of Hinduism, then I have to always sit and chant, I have to sit and meditate, but I don't like doing that. Mm. Hinduism isn't so fashionable like how the other religions are. Like you see, in Christianity, I don't need to follow anything. Mm. I can just be cool and it's nice to live like that. Why should I be a Hindu still? <laughs> See, being a Hindu may not be fashionable, fashionable at the moment, but it empowers you. Would you want to go for fashion which is, makes you powerless or would you want to go for empowerment? Empowers your being, your soul, your personality with the very foundation of knowledge. Which would you choose? See, you said in Christianity I do not have to follow anything, but I am not sure if you know the entire thing. In Christianity there is something called sincere repentance. There is something called you go to Jesus Christ, you go to the churches, you pray to Him. It may not have the rituals and the pujas and the homas and the slokas as you describe in Hinduism, but these rituals, the homas, the pujas and slokas are based on the signs of sound. 
the, si the science of silence, even the silence that penetrates the place, the space, after the Homa is finished, is so filled with peace and joy. I am sure you would have experienced it at some point of time or the other. As for slokas, like what I said was, I did not understand the meaning of why I should chant this and what is my benefit when I chant this, which is why I used to get bored. But when Swamiji is teaching us that this loka means this and this is the benefit, the power of sound, chanting the slokas is not just telling dear father in heaven, whatever, whatever. It comes from the being. The language of Sanskrit itself is based on signs of sound. When you chant with the feeling of the of completion, the slokas give you a feeling of fulfillment from where when you start the day, your day can never bring you misery, can never bring you conflicts. It will hold you in the highest space of completion which you can radiate to the world. The only problem is that nowadays there is so much of conflict of the non-understanding of the science of sound and why I should chant a sloka. But if you come to the Gurukul, the Nityananda Gurukul or you are part of the Nityananda Sangha or attend any of the programs in the Nityananda Peetam, especially the 21 day inner awakening program, this whole science of the Sanatana Dharma excuse me, or the science of Hinduism is taught in such a scientific way that nobody no scientific mind can deny the impact this has on human consciousness. You all would have heard of Professor Emoto's experiment with water, how he had placed water in two different rooms and one he, pl he played chanting or the soft music, how that water felt when he, when he did a research after a few days and this other water which he placed in the room where he would go and shout at it every day. We have done such great scientific researches. Why Diksha is important? Why slokas? Why yoga? Why we eat the food we eat? Why Hinduism propagates vegetarianism or sattvic food? All the science is taught in such a beautiful way that you will be so convinced, you will be fundamentally unshaken when someone asks you. The whole thing about not being fashionable is not having the answers. When you experience it, inside of you, not being fashionable is fashionable nowadays. See the many great celebrities that we tend to say are fashionable. They are the people who have broken the glass ceilings of what is a societal rule of fashion, what is a societal rule of good looking. I am sure all of us will agree if you actually go back and see. Michael Jackson was not considered good looking but his talent preceded everything in this world. His music was outstanding. But if he had let people like you who told, oh, it's not fashionable to be like this, you need to be more handsome, you cannot go on the stage and perform like this, who would see you? Do you think he would have been able to give the world the joy of music, the celebration of music, the music that he has delivered to the world that makes you or reconnects you at some point of time or the other to your inner self. Do you think he would have been able to give that? No. Have the courage to know and understand Hinduism and from that courage your foundation will be so strong and unshakable nobody will be able to shake you. Okay, I have one more question coming up. So, thanks a lot. I actually understood how Hinduism actually makes us live a more fashionable life, actually mm. a better life mm. than what I understand as fashionable. But now I have a question. Mm. See, in Hinduism, there are like in Hinduism itself, there are so many religions like um, Shaivism, Vaishnavism, yes. where they follow Shiva, Vishnu, or Devi. But Hinduism says the concept that everything is one, everybody is one. Then why do we have to? Like, you know, join another religion, like either a Shiva devotee or a Vishnu devotee. Why can't we just be a Hindu as we are? Like, why is there so many gods and why should we have so many religions in Hinduism? Okay. Mm, let me tell you in the best way that I know. See, there is a vegetable, potato. 
Some people like it deep fried, some people like it mashed, some people like it raw. So, if you're part of my family, you're my extended part of my family, and you come home, I, as a hostess, would like to make food the way you like. But what happens to the other 10 people who are part of my family? Will they be forced to eat it? Yeah, some may just tolerate it and eat it saying, oh, she's a guest, so food is made to her likability. But why should I make people feel that? I'd rather have everybody feeling that they're special and unique. So I will make potato the way you like it, be it raw, mashed or deep fried. I will make potato the way all 10 people in my family who are part of my family like it so everybody feels complete about it not even giving a space for incompletion that is hinduism that is sanatana dharma that will make you feel like coming back to me again and again wouldn't you feel that you would want to come back to my house if i treat you the way you should be treated the way every human being should be treated a unique special being who's here to live life to know life to know his super consciousness to know his antaratma, to know what is Paramatma, right? When you are here for the same reason and I am here for the same reason, it is just sometimes the social, demographical, political, geographical, gender barriers that keep us apart. To find the purpose of life, whether it is about Paramatma or Antaratma or Ishwar or Jagat, or Jeevan. Don't let any barrier stop you. If you have any more questions, clarifications, queries regarding any of these, please leave your comments in box. And I would really recommend that everybody who wants to know about Hinduism should attend the Inner Awakening, the 21 day program. And if you feel that that program is not now for you and you want to explore more about Hinduism, then become an Adi Navasi. Or, or one more option is continue watching Swamiji Satsangs every morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Nityananda TV. Any more questions, clarifications, please leave your messages and I will get back to you. Oh, I can see one more quick coming. Actually, hmm. I really enjoyed this video hmm. and I would also like to invite all my friends and I just wanted to thank you for making me understand on what is Hinduism exactly and why should we worship God. And now I know how to find the real God. And for sure, I will come and attend the Inner Awakening that is going to happen at Bang Bangalore Adinam. Yes. And I loved all your videos and I would prefer more and more videos. And for sure, I will watch all your videos. It's so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you like my videos, please don't forget to share, subscribe and press like on these videos. Please share it with as many friends as you want and you have who may have this confusion about what Hinduism is. And remember, Hinduism, especially in India, is part of my identity. And when you do not go to the depth of the identity and understand what your identity is, we all grow up to be confused people. Understanding your fundamentals and then taking a decision from that is completely different. But just living life in the confused space of my very fundamental reason for existence will lead to a confused life. Please write to us for any further clarifications, questions regarding Hinduism, about my Guruji, Swamiji, His Holiness, Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda Swami, or about the Inner Awakening program, or how you can be part of the Nityananda Sangha, the Adi Nivasis. Anything, please write, and I will get back to you. Nityanandam.